I know the book is about 10 years old and in the speeches and interviews that I've, I've watched in preparation for this conversation I, that, you know, are from roughly that time period, you know, in about 2011, I, I remember you often would make this remark in these public appearances that it was still, the internet really had been successfully removed from North Korea to the point where it was still largely a hermetically sealed country. If you have a general sense of the place now, and this is you know dovetailing into a question I would have for you about hope for the people of North Korea, um, what's your sense of the place in 2022 when we're having this conversation? Has has the internet broken through to some serious degree where people are better informed? There's a more of a risk that the people in charge are are at risk for being overturned how, how do you think about that currently um no it, ha- it hasn't opened up in fact i think it's gotten more closed things things opened up a bit after the death of kim jong il in 2011 when kim jong un the current leader his young son now i guess approaching 40, but he was like in his late 20s, early 30s at the time. I think things became a little bit more open initially, um, but they, I think, have become more closed since then, and especially because of the pandemic. North Korea completely sealed its borders um, in early 2020 because of the coronavirus, and there were health reasons, but I think there were also political reasons. I've, I've seen this in China as well, that a lot of um, regimes have used COVID as an excuse to tighten controls, keep people from moving, keep keep track of who sees whom. It's you know, it, it's it's contact tracing, but it's also for for um, health reasons, but it's also contact tracing for political reasons. And right now the border is really sealed between North Korea and China. And so I think it's probably more closed than than it was five, six years ago. Yeah. And you know, for a while there was this um, weird system where where North Koreans could get Chinese mobile telephones and they could go right right up to the Chinese border and they could call South Korea. It was like a whole thing because there's now mobile telephones in North Korea, but they're only internal. You can't call, you can't make a phone call <laughs> outside the country. So as I said, people would smuggle in these Chinese phones. Um, and you'd like, if you were in North Korea and you wanted to talk to your relative in the South, you know, you sort of arrange things through a broker and then you'd go to like a mountain near the Chinese border and make a phone call there. That I think has stopped. And, you know, there was a time that the people in my book had um, quite a bit of contact with um, with their relatives back in North Korea, but now they don't. 